Hey, how's it going guys? Matt here, Code Tech Notorials. Just going to update the I am GUI um, repo and just add a second video. Just based on uh, some of the comments, I decided to take another look at it and see if there was anything I missed. And it looks like it could use some updating. So uh, just to clarify a few things, uh, this is pulling down the libraries with VC PKG. And if you're not, if you don't have that set up, You'll have to do the libraries a different way, but I'd recommend just using VCPKG. I do have a video on that, but also I'll just link the documentation on it because it's kind of faster to go through the documentation than watch my video. But if you're still stuck on it, just watch the video. And we're using CMake in this particular one. And there's a top level CMake, of course, and one that says use subdirectory. So it goes to this one, sets up all the libraries, makes it executable. So when CMake runs, it should do all this stuff. It should grab these libraries if you have VCPKG set up and it should make your executable when you build it. Now it's gonna make the executable based off your config and we have a few configs set up already in this CMake JSON, uh, basically a debug and a release. So when you go to run it, you have to click up here and go to uh, a target and we've got a target ready to go right there. So if you hit play, it should run. Now I made a few changes to just a few other things which I'm going to go ahead and show and that is the code. I noticed this code was a little lackluster. Sure, okay, let's look at this base class and use IM GUI. We've got init, new frame, update, render, shutdown. Update is virtual so you can overload it or override it if you want but uh, it has a base version and I was looking at this and it was a little weird and maybe not quite right. So there's this render Conan logo. Now this is a local function, a function that's only available in this CPP unless we extern it into our other one, which we're not gonna do. But if you wanna use it in your main one, you can of course just go extern, boom, and then you can use it in here if you want. But uh, if we look at it, it doesn't have an IM GUI begin and it doesn't have an end. So in the update, uh, the one that's in the non overridden version. So if you don't override it, it's going to just do this one. Uh, we have a begin. It says, hello world. I'm going to put Conan logo instead uh, and just update this. And then it's going to call this render Conan logo and then end. So you got to have a begin and an end, of course. And this is all the stuff middle. So there's a nice little example there. And everything else, the render and shutdown is all the same for GLFW and OpenGL. But now let's look at our example. We made our own custom class inherited from UseI and GUI, and we override the update. So this is going to be called instead if we use our own custom GUI. And we've just got some some basic kind of random stuff in here. And I changed the begin to custom GUI. Hello world. That way you can tell what it's coming from. But this is going to get called normally. So we go down to our main, you know, it's got the setup and all that stuff. And eventually uh, we get to the while loop and that's where all the stuff happens. We got a new frame update render. Now this update is what's going to call this one here. But if we comment this out, it should change to the logo. There's the Conan logo. Uh, and then if we override it, we should get what we actually put in there. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, let's make sure it builds. Yeah, there we go. And there's our code. So there's a, you know, there's a lot we could do here. We, the clear color is not actually updated. So what's supposed to happen is uh, we should be using this to change GL. So let's just make another function here called void uh, update or change clear color. All right, we'll make this one private. Change clear color. And it's, it's just going to use OpenGL stuff to clear the color. And now we need to take this static float and let's actually make it a member here of our class. So let's just make it a private member. Uh, we bring it in here by reference, so that should work fine. And uh, yeah, we won't mess with the rest of it, but let's actually make this clear color change our background color. And the way we do that is, well, we call this GL clear color right here. So we're going to take that out of there and put it right here. And now we just need to decide when to call this function. So this thing, if we look at these color edits, they do return a Boolean. So you can see it there on the hover. It might be a little small, but if you go look at the IM GUI code for color edit, it returns a Boolean for when it changes. So we can just put like clear 
We're going to make a local clear color change. And then after this end, we can just say if clear color changed, all change clear color. And that should be enough. I guess I'll put it in, in brackets just to make it super clear. But this little local variable should uh, be true if it changed and uh, call this function. So I had this variable accidentally named the function name. That, of course, would throw an error as expected. All right, so there we go. And now it's set to some random value, but as we change it, it should actually update our background. A little better. Let's give it some defaults though. So let's just use an initializer list here. And we'll just go, let's just default it to zero because we got to call this at least once. Otherwise it's just going to be the default color that initializes as, which is this black color. So there we go. Now we can change it just like so. And uh, that's a little better, a little more interactive. And we could do more stuff if we want, but I think that's fine for now. Let's make sure these are floats. And I'm going to go ahead and push these little updates. Maybe you're using VS Code, and that's actually fine. So let's do an example with Visual Studio Code. Well, I'm just going to open the CMake with Visual Studio Code here, like so. But essentially, if you're using Visual Studio Code and you've got the default CMake application, it should detect uh, most of your stuff, and it's going to pop up and ask you what compiler you want to use, and that's fine. I've added the git ignore for the build directory that VS Code makes and the I am GUI any that you're going to get. And this uh, VS Code is going to by default build it into the build folder, whereas Visual Studio goes into out, build, etc. So a little different there. But to do this one, well, I am going to upload this file, but basically it's going to put your runtime into this directory. So for VS Code, you need that little launch.json to make this debug button work. But first, you have to build it. And to build it, you got to go into terminal and you basically need to go into your build and then to I am GUI and look for this project and that you need to call ms build on it or whatever compiler you're using but uh, i'm gui uh, dot vc project okay so that should actually build it and uh, we got some you know some double to flow warnings but we're not going to worry about those but it actually built zero errors so then it should have the program you can go look at that manually and you can path to it and launch it uh, in your command line uh, just like, let's see, where is it? It's, it's in debug, so we're building this debug. And then uh, there it is, there's an executable. So you can just like dot slash I am GUI. Uh, example, let's see if this works. Yep, there we go. So you can do it this way too. It's essentially about the same. Or if you have this launch.json set up this path, you can just hit this play button once you have it built. And boom, there you go. All right, so I'm going to push these changes I made. Let me know if you have any further questions or problems, but hopefully that helps you get going. Check out CMake episode 10 on my channel if you're still confused about how to use CMake over here on Visual Studio Code and the whole MS build things. I do cover that a little more in depth in that video. All right, thanks for watching. Peace out, guys.